the 2B, this is the Orange class. Now, today is Thursday, um, April 20th, which uh, apparently is important for more than one reason. It is 420. Uh, if, if you don't know, that's good. I didn't know, uh, but I happen to know now. Good working at public school. So. All, right. All right, here we go. Let's build part of this talk together. Um, do me a favor, please write down the equation, A cosine. Now, I don't know if I'm going to give it to you on the assessment, so anytime you have to write it, make sure that um, you, you do write it over and over. And the idea, shh, oh, by the way, you're on page 27. Oh, if you didn't already on the page one, go ahead and write your name and class color on that first page. Oh, a little extra guy behind there, good, good, good. Uh, good catch. That's panel. Let's see if I can squeeze that guy in. Got to get on front page. Go ahead and put your name, class, color. And then go ahead and write in that equation. How are you going to memorize that thing? Is it A? Is it B? I'm not sure. Just write it more than once. Too loud. Too loud already. Too loud already. All right. They need to be reminded of what the A is. So let's see. My space is limited. I'm going to write mine and call it erase. Do you write towards above or below? Can someone tell me what the A represents? Uh, what word goes with A? Uh, amplitude. Yeah, that's old school. That's unit six. That's physics. Amplitude. That's physics. Okay. Amplitude. I'm not a physicist. Okay. H. Anybody remember H? What that one is? Height. It won't be the word that goes with it. A happens to be amplitude, but H, the, what you're going to tell me about it, um, won't have an H. Is that K? No, no, but uh, that's coming next. But um, If it's not the height... <laughs> this one is a... Uh, uh, move left to right, um, and that's what I'm trying to say. Um, the H tells you how much the uh, the wave or the graph has been moved left or right. Oh, I forgot. Uh -huh. So the H tells you how much has been moved to the left or the right, and then what is the K? Uh huh. Is up and down move. I should put graph move up and down, but uh, move. And you know the hit the buttons up there? Uh, up or down? Yeah. All right. Hey, those are the pieces of the puzzle. All right, step one. Let's see what people remember. There's the first thing that we have to do. When we look at uh, this wave, um, we have to put in the midline. Anyone know where you can put the midline on this picture? Just to see who remembers. Because again, we're teaching it um, at four. Four, four. four Y. All right. <laughs> I think you were going to say four. Um, so go ahead and put in your midline at four. I want you almost to do it with a highlighter. Ow. But if you Why didn't, you uh, I would take it with a pencil. The highlighter would uh, help the midline. This one after that, I want you to put K. Put K after the midline and actually write down the word midline. This is from unit six, unit six, the third standard. You know, if you know how you can. Yeah, I said that. Good job, guys. All right. Now, here's what's important for this one we are doing cosine on this one. There's a certain part of this picture that we start off. Back row, back row, back row. Are uh, you guys need something? You guys try to get it. Yes, by the way, we're good. Uh, got it. Okay. Just um, good. There's a certain place you start on the graph um, to start it at cosine. Anyone know exactly where you start it? Uh, no, no, not in this case. And the way I'm asking the question is a little bit faulty. Isn't it like this with this side? Um, the key is the top of the mountain is where you start for cosine. You go from one top to oh, the other yeah. top. And I'm going to 
Draw a dotted line. I can't do lines. <laughs> so you're going top to top, get your cosine. Now the question, the reason that's important is the equation that you could write could be the sine or it could be the cosine. Um, for today, we're going to focus on cosine. Let me mention sine just so that one person, or um, you will have heard at least one time, and that is, if you were starting with sine, you would start here at the midline. Um, and then you go up and down until you hit the midline again. Uh, cosine, top to top, I think it's easier to remember. For today's purposes, cosine, top to top. As a matter of fact, you put uh, above cosine, top to top, top, top. Uh -huh. Say again. 
no, you got to see whatever pitch you shot with. So for my height, the belly button is here. Let's say if um, Marcus was standing, the belly button might be a little bit higher. So it depends on how big the pitcher is. When you slice it, uh, you have. All right, uh, let's see. So we got top to the bottom. Anybody know the H? It has to do with where we started highlighting the uh, cosine wave. Dang. Oh, four? Four, four, four. Four, four, four. If anyone here is a lawyer later on, I want you to sue whoever uh, created this problem. Are you sure it's four? Oh, yeah, that's Say it again, please. That's right, you're wrong. Where are we? Four, four, what? So the H? All right, let me put in the four, then don't forget your question, and let's see if what I do answers yours. Here it goes. Here, uh, oh. That's kind of close to four. I would take the four, but if anybody backed it up, the H is from zero. How far over do you move to start the problem? Yeah, so what I'm going to do, yeah, let's make it 3.5, and that way we don't have to sue the people with all the fours. If somebody put a four, nah. If it's really not a four, then number four. 3.5. Take a look. Um, uh, there's a question there, a question there. And we'll see. All right. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Sonia, then uh, Richard. Top to top. You won't be doing sign this time. I don't say it's child uh, But if you have to do sign, once you cut it at the belly button, if it, um, Sign it starts back a bit. So if I were doing a sign, it'd be boom, boom. So top to top, go sign. Sign is a ground, ground, ground. Statement, yeah. It's like the letter S. It's okay. That's the top of the mountain. I have the top of the mountain to the belly button. That's where it begins. So I'm putting the H here, and then Rich, I still know you, uh, you have a question, I just hope you get it over to you. Say again? So the, uh, oh, again, for that one, this side of the room, so they can hear? Yeah. Um, this one here is uh, where the cosine wave actually begins. So where the first top is, that's where um, that H is. So take a look, see if you want anything else. So you're about to try and produce uh, and ask for the guy next door in a moment. Mm -hmm. Aptitude, you actually still have to. You must stay aware. The A is connected to this line here. The aptitude is the distance between the um, midline and the top of the mountain. So make sure you write that in, uh, everything we have there. All right, do me a favor. Go ahead and try to produce the, the equation, that trigonometric equation that um, goes with this graph over here. Do me a favor. Make sure you write down the equation again. Do not just put in the pieces. Put in your A. Cosine. And again, we're doing cosines. We could do sine also. But I don't want to try and uh, confuse people right now. Um, most of it is the same. The only difference is, difference is where does it begin? So for someone who wants to know, if this were a sine wave, everything would be the same except the H would be at 1 instead of at 3.5. But everything else, the height is still the same. That's no big deal. Uh, the midline would be the same. If we, uh, so if you had to do a sine, so this one, there, I'm doing cosine again. Write down the equation again. Because I'm going to write it down at least four times today, I'm going to have it memorized. So this is unit six. Put in there. Where the wave begins. Well, I think it's going up right here. Where? Wave. 
All right, let's fill this one together. Um, you'll get uh, hopefully um, a couple more tries with the basics. Um, and then we'll get into the deep part. Here we go. Oh, that's you. Let's do it maybe by, maybe do it by tables. Maybe this front table will ask you guys for the uh, A, uh, this table here for the H, this table here for the K, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, uh, actually, let's do the uh, K first. This table here, what is it, uh, K? Uh, Richard's table, Richard, uh, Sonia. What? The K is Negative three is correct when you slice that guy there. Just circle the uh, the number that's there, and you have your minus three. All right, um, let's go over here. Uh, Jose's table. Um, anyone at the table? What is the H? What is the H at that table? Are you talking to me? Uh, it is negative one. It is a one uh, that we put in. The uh, H happened to already have a minus sign, so let's just do this. And then I will show where that comes from. So I guess I'll teach the people. but could be so tricky that I've decided. Oh, you tell us. I'm going to rest our lives on. Oh, that's not. I have to go forward. All right, uh, and the A? Uh, three. It's two. Oh, it's two. Yeah. Sorry, how is it two? I've never really heard everything in my life wrong. Listen, all the people who are uh, recording me, uh, Everything in my life is wrong right now. <laughs> Take a look. You're A from the midline to the top of the mountain. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, you're H. Uh, you're K. And the H. Okay, well. Oh, yeah. It is just two. Okay. So let's try to figure out is from the midline. How many spaces up would you go? Can you explain how you found the one? The one um uh the one tells you where you began, where your wave began. So if I were highlighting my wave, the cosine is top to top. So that means the cosine wave begins right here. And it goes down and does its thing. It begins right here at one. On the X line. For me, my cosine wave begins right here. So what are you saying? Over here? Yeah, I never saw this so white. If mm, that's a good way of saying it. So the beginning thing may be confusing. I'll say it this way. When you're when you're about to write an equation for a wave. You have to choose just one of them. Yeah, it repeats over and over and over a million times. This is the one that I'm choosing. And the one I'm having you all choose is the first one you come to um, to the right of the line. Let's say you want to go after. So basically, we have to choose the one after. I wouldn't say it that way, but like, if you understand it that way, then you can know the culture, dude. All right. When you do it, please write down the official formula so you have it memorized. Put in your A, your cosine, parentheses, put down your B. If you keep writing it down, you won't have to memorize it. Um, After this, we're going to move on to a word problem, which is really where they're going to be taking you. Actually, I'm going to back up. No, no, let's do it. K was on this problem. Uh, what? Thank you so much. What is the A? Oh. Yeah, and do me a favor, because there are a couple people who had a trouble with it. Put the K on the actual um, graph, please. That way, if you, um, something's broken, I know you can do what you're looking for. All right, uh, I heard that the A is going to be 1 as well. I hear that from here to here. It is a subtraction problem. Okay, Yeah, it's always a subtraction problem. It's just when they're positive numbers, it's easy. 2 take away 1 is 1. 
when they're in the negative zone, that messes some people up, because they don't know. Last one. Someone say it. What is the um, H going to be? Yo, one. No, wait, no, no, no. Bio. Yeah. Nothing in the wrong way. Right, right. Where does my um, cosine wave begin? It begins right here at pi over 2. Take a look and see if you're confused. If you want to ask something, you ask it now. Ask out one of the letters, A, H, or K. It's all like learning. A plus or minus. All right. Here it comes. You can work together if you're not quite sure. Go for the last one, please. Do the last one. Okay, we'll come check in a minute. AC. That means you don't get it. But the main thing for you, step one, slice it in half. That gets you at least the last number. That gets you your case. After that, then the A is usually the second easiest. Because it's how much is it from the line you slice to the very top. And then the hardest one. And then the last one that's hard to become is where does the wave begin? And that way you can just circle. For some people, of course, become a little bit uh, what what is this? What number should oh, I, I, I did it. Oh, right. A E. Is it I don't know. Say the whole thing. I'm just putting that part in so oh. that uh, uh, some people. Will, uh, oh. right, I'm coming around to check mark this one because again, I feel like it's like oh, I know what I'm looking for. Hands up, red hands if you were mentioned. Other if you were mentioned. Others. This whole. Please write out the equation. Why does he keep asking to write out the equation? Because again, now that I've written it out a few times, Coast, oops. I don't have to memorize it. And you may not get it on the test initially. B X minus H. Alright, that's what I have here. I got you. That's what I mean. Boy. And when I come around, please put a highlight on your um on your what's the thing? Midline. Midline. Um, yeah. I don't. I honestly don't even believe you and it's better Right 
It goes from the second line up to one for 50 cents, that's a dollar, that's 50 cents. Oh, it's not very important. And it's always this guy here, which is why the K is so important. And again, if you have a calculator, all you have to do is you have to subtract the one minus the point. All right, let's go to the next level, which is actually the only two levels. So this is level one. This is the most important level. Level two is they're going to ask you for the range. Not too bad. Makes sound like the domain. Not too bad. <laughs> what they mean is going to demand which is why we're going to get to the end word box. We have to read and highlight in the paragraph what they're talking about. And so let me see if we can back up for just a second to um. So this guy here, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do a fake domain and a real range. So here we go. Let's do range first. Back up to page 27. Write down the word range. And write down the word domain. So it's always the same. It's always comparing your midline, okay? All right, here we go, here we go. Listen up, listen up. There we go. The range are the numbers on the Y line. Um, this is just a fake problem. It's not a real world situation. So they didn't tell you what these numbers represent. Eventually, you'll have to identify the numbers um, from the lowest to the largest. I'll show that in just a second. That's the easy part. And then they're going to say, oh, this is the temperature. This is the height of the wave. This is um, what time the sun comes up. It has to be something on that side. And they're going to tell you. Uh, so they just want for you to be able to look at a graph and read the title of the graph, read the bottom and the side. So in this case, we're just going to put in the numbers, but we don't know what it is until we get to a word problem. So Thomas, what is the range? Oh, let me ask you. On the Y line, what is the lowest number and the highest number of the wave? Zero to eight. She is correct. How do you write that? Bracket zero comma eight. Eight. Because lowest point of the wave. You see how, how high the wave goes and how low it goes. Um, on the Y line, the lowest it goes is zero. And then it goes up, up, up until the highest it goes is a range. So writing down the range won't be a big deal. What it represents is this uh, the time, is this the high, what it is, and we can go to where problems to tell us that. The domain is a little different. Um, Are you I, I'm not going to go with the real answer. We're going to go with the fake answer. For our purposes, I will let the domain be where the wave begins to where the wave ends. Now, real waves, um, like uh, Jose saying, they go on and on forever and ever. So the real answer uh, um, is all real numbers or um, from negative infinity to positive infinity. But for our purposes, we're not going to do that first. We're going to keep it, someone knows the domain is where the graph begins to where it ends. So in this case, where does it begin? It's, uh -huh, it's our H. Uh, in this case, it was our 3.5. Where does this one seem to end? Uh, 13.5. Yeah, 13.5. Yeah. In real life, we would put all real numbers, uh, so that if you get in a real, um, you have a stage test. Yeah, for these, we use the brackets because we're going to include those points. If this were a real um, test, state test, you don't have to write down the R. This means all real numbers. All right, um, do me a favor, write the domain and the range of the next door neighbor. No, let's not do that, please. All right, write in the domain and range on the second guy, and then the next problem we're going to do is we're going to actually try and set down the equation for the um, word problem. Second, we'll do the domain and range.
And then third, we'll highlight in the word problem what are they even talking about. But um, right in the main range, this one I'm actually going to find a check mark and then we'll go to. All right, let's have it. What is the domain on this problem here? I hear a one. All real numbers. Uh huh. One over to five. Yes. Yeah. Write it down, write it down if you don't have it. One to five. Where's the answer? It's not negative. But we don't it. it starts at one, one to five. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, why did I do it backwards? Oh, sorry about that. Here, we'll pause. Pause. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I confused me too. I'm not going to switch. Yeah. No, it's okay. No. No. <laughs> I apologize for that. Okay. Making something slightly trickier than it has to be. I know, but it's really fine to call it fine. Well, it's not just a fine. Well, I like to call things fine. I'll show you. Fine is dead. Fine is dead. I like it. I still call things fine. What is the range? Negative five. Alright, take a look and see. Um, for those who aren't sure about that, the range is the real oh. deal. <laughs> the domain is fake. <laughs>
I'll get in trouble one day. But uh, for uh, now, I'm just going with it. And it's just to find an equation that models all. Please circle the word models. Circle highlight any time. Circle and highlight any time they ask you for an equation that goes with a real world problem. You are modeling a real world problem. Model a real world problem. That is, you are um, writing out an equation that will represent that real world situation. All right, let's see what we got here. What are the side numbers? They didn't put any words. What are these side numbers? It is the range, but what are these guys in real life? Of course, this scenario. Uh, temperature. All yeah. right, temperature. Why not? You're always supposed to tell someone. I know. Please write that down on your paper, please. Temperature on the side. For my purposes, yes. In a real deal situation, for all of these waves. These waves go on and off forever and ever. So it's actually all real numbers. But for the purposes of... Can I just well, always write know, all real numbers? No, because no. it won't show itself in some places. Write down temperature. Write down temperature. No, it gets cold, but it gets real hot, too. Very right. So here's the deal. Here's what they're going to ask you. What does your domain mean in this situation? It does mean months, um, and these are the uh, the number of months that we are looking at um, to consider the temperature. So you have to say what's really going on. What do we uh, What do we discover the range? So what do these tell us? This range. Uh -huh. But in this scenario, how would you say it? And what are the words on my page? Quiet, please. Those on that side. Hold the door. Right. So it says um, basically um, the lowest temperature um, is 20 and it goes all the way up to the highest temperature, which is 68. So you're just saying in regular talk that the range is from the lowest to the highest. All right, last time. Yes, they're going to ask you what does it mean. So you, um, just the way you would say it out loud. So if I was like, um, in this case, I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, so here we go. You're gonna, um, so in this case, the domain, uh, the months um, that we looked at the temperature were from the seventh month to the 21st month. Did we put that already right there? Yeah. Right. You wrote it in number form, but you're going to say what that meant. And so, in short, let's say this part, if you get all of that, this part is extra. Let's say a person can't write out the domain is the number of months um, that we look at the temperature. Domain, let's say, what does it mean? Yeah. In this scenario, it's the number of months that we look at temperatures. So we looked at um, those months. We check the temperature. Would that be like an extra push for us, or would we need You can get um, what we have up here is enough to get it. Should we need? Uh, this would, might put us in a three range. The range are the temperatures um, considered during uh, certain months. We can give you one one last chance to do we'll do a domain and then we'll put it all together one last time and that'll be it. So you got your you're down to your final two chances to figure out whatever's going on, to ask me, to ask a neighbor. Uh,
Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do the domain on one, and then we're gonna do the whole thing on another. So here it comes the temperature um, considered over time, considered over months. Over 24 months. Over 24 months. Even though in this particular case it's true, we just looked at it at even for a shorter amount of time. Oh, that's true. That's true. I appreciate that. <laughs> They can be said more than one way, but I put temperature considered over several months. If you are not good with describing this part, you're kind of in the safety zone. Just write some down, give it a shot. This isn't the part that will kill you. All this other stuff is. Yes. The temperature considered over several months. We're going to skip a page, write down the domain, then we'll skip back, do the whole thing, and then uh, I'll have to go. So where are you going right now? Skip a page to... In the second one. I should say, no, skip to him. We're going to skip him. We're trying to get to this guy right here. What are you doing on this one? You're going to write down the domain. Yeah. Uh, this is not so good. Good at Texas. See if you can identify the domain. Some of you may not know how to find the domain. Where does the graph begin on the x-axis? And where does it end on the x-axis? So you skip a page, skip a page, you're going to try the domain on this one. Which is officially the first question. Find the domain. And the domain can be found by finding uh, the beginning of the graph all the way to the end of the graph. And then you're going to say what the domain is in this scenario. So you have to go read the problem somewhere to see what that is about. That's the only thing I got left. And I didn't want to. No, we'll see. Well, I know you have the. Um,
person you should recall this one. This is actually your um, test question way back in the day. While you were knowledgeable, you'd know which of the people. Okay. Okay. I'm choosing this too. And my midline. Yes, I thought Take a look, take a look. Top to top. I'm going to use this top. To this top. Uh, a couple people would use different tops. Tops. Top to top. Some people's answers are going to be slightly different, but at least you know the same concept. Let's see what we got here. This one, I'm going to use a 4. I saw someone else use it. I'm going to use a 4.2. I did 4.3. I didn't have a 4.2. Okay. Yeah, I have a terrible problem. I love this problem. I need this problem. This one is a... You can as long as it's to the left up, but if you use another one, it's okay. As long as you do top to top, you're okay. I got my K. Here's my K. I just need it, uh, an H. What is this H here um, on mine? This is your first one. Two. Two, I'm going to take it.
Yeah, in this case here, I push it to the dotted line to where it actually began to go down. So in this case, when I push it, it gets to a three. If I were backing up to another problem. But you got two. Oh, I would push it to two. I would push it to two. This problem is bad because the numbers aren't on there. But what I want you to feel is this. I would push it to two, though. Why would you push it in the first place? Because the question they're asking me is say, hey, Thomas, you know what waves are up and pull? Yeah. What? Yeah. It's you. It's you. It's directly on the number. Like yeah, the number. Like that's what I'm saying. Well, that's why this one is bad. But let's say, but they were like, oh, let's, make sure no. yeah. let's say you decide to do the top to top here. This is where I want to begin. I start here, and I start pushing, right? I'm pushing until I get to where I want to start. Boom. I want to start right here. The answer is, we get three stars at the first top past the Y line. So for my purposes, the first top is this guy. Okay. I got it now. You get it. I got it. All right. Now he's. All right. Here we go.